Okay, Eamon, uh, there's only one show in town this weekend. It's the Ireland-Estonia yeah. European playoff. Um, Ireland are 11-4 on to qualify, but the general consensus is that they find it more difficult when they're favourites. Do you think that this will be a factor? I don't think that we're favourites. I think this is a close call. I've seen uh, three matches this week involving Estonia. The home games against uh, Northern Ireland and against Italy and the away game in Belfast. And I think they're a very useful side. Uh, they, they're well organised, well coached. Uh, they're aggressive. Uh, they hunt the ball in packs. They close down space very quickly. They're a counter-attack inside, essentially. Um, I would say we have to give them the utmost respect. So I think those odds of 3-1 to one on, 11-4 to on, Ireland to qualify are seriously wrong. It's a much closer call than that. Um, well, it's been well documented that Estonia won three away games in qualifying, but at home they actually only won twice, and one of those was in the last minute against the Faroe Islands. Um, Ireland tend to do better away from home under Trapattoni. Will that have a big impact on the game? Well, it's obvious uh, to me why they are better away from home. They're a counter-attacking side. Uh, they would have the same problem at home that we have, uh, creating openings uh, and opening up uh, a, a good defence uh, and they rely on counter-attack uh, they play long balls they play early balls they're not a typical um, European side there's not a lot of short passing and intricate build-up what they tend to do is get the ball and knock it forward quick and they've got a bit of pace pace on the left pace on the right a guy called Puri uh, they've got a big guy up front Aguapera, who, if he, who played against Northern Ireland in Tallinn, not against Italy, but he's useful, knocks balls on for runners. Vasiliev is a key player for them. He gets forward, uh, he can score a goal, uh, he gets on the ball quite a lot. He's a, he's a, he's a very good player. And it's, uh, I can't explain the Faroe Island result. It's remarkable. They lost in the Faroe Islands uh, and they almost lost at home. But uh, the side I saw uh, would have... Um, would need to be respected. They're as I can understand why they do well away from home. In Serbia, for example, they were uh, a goal down and they came back and won three one. Now Serbia are a good team. You know, people like Vidic playing for them, uh, and they're no mugs. So that I think is a truer um, gauge to how good this 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 team is than the Faroe Islands result. Uh, I think for Ireland, it would be possible to be aggressive. I think you can get at them, particularly out wide. The right back, I think, is very suspect. Uh, the left back's a good player, but the back four as a whole aren't entirely convincing. The goalkeeper is also a little bit dodgy, but they work very, very hard in midfield, and they will come in and crowd midfield when we have the ball in there. But they do leave spaces where you can get it out to, say, Aidan McGeady or Damien Duff if he's out there, or if we were inclined to let our full backs go forward and attack them, then it would be a real problem for them. But the way we set up, I think the likeliest outcome is that, you know, it'll be stalemate away from home. Mm. Um, like Ireland haven't lost away to any of our main qualification rivals on the trap, and, you know, they're 11 to 8 again to win now in Tallinn. Um, we haven't beaten any of the main rivals no. at home either. That's, that's yeah. the other side of it. Does that mean Ireland can't afford to have to chase anything in the second leg? That the first yes. leg is that way more important? Well, it's, it's very important to score away from home because away goals count double uh, in this uh, qualifying uh, game or series. Uh, so the away goal is vital if you can get it. Uh, a nil-nil away from home isn't great because if, if your opponent scores at home, then you have to score two. So if... Trapattoni is sensible. I assume he's watched the same DVDs I've watched. He will uh, uh, look to score tomorrow night and be prepared to pass the ball and get our team forward into aggressive attacking positions. If we don't do that, then a nil-nil is a distinct possibility. And it will be then all down to Tuesday night. And the way we're playing at home... Uh, we're made for them, really. We're, we're not retaining possession. One of the keys to this, the outcome of this playoff is retaining possession of the ball. We usually play against European teams who are good at retaining possession. 
and they pass around us and we end up chasing uh, shadows. That's what happened with Slovakia and at times with Armenia as well uh, in the Aviva. This team doesn't have that creative kind of passing movement. What they tend to do is win the ball and play it long real quick, endeavouring to use their pace. Now, that means we're going to get cheap possession and it makes possession of the ball absolutely critical. So in a way, that will, they will suit us a lot more than the teams we've played. It will be more like an English type game, you know, possession being given away cheaply, perhaps by both teams. But we have the quality in certain areas that they just possibly lack a little bit. Robbie Keane, his ability to uh, steal goals uh, and to take chances, especially in playoff games, he's got a great record, uh, will be vital. And I think the solidity of Richard Dunn at the back and his leadership will be very, very important as well. You touched on it a minute ago, scored his first leg in mm. Talent tomorrow night, 7-1. to one. Do you think that's worth the... Yes, I do. I think there are a couple of bets. Richard Dunn to score first goal uh, is around 25-1, to 33-1 to one in some places. These guys are a bit suspect from set pieces and Richard Dunn is our second top scorer. Uh, after Robbie Keane, who's playing tomorrow. Uh, so I think Richard Dunn to score first is a great bet at that price. I think nil-nil is also a great bet. And if you wanted, you could have Ireland to win 1-0. If we, if we play well, we need to play well to beat these guys over two legs. We won't sort of stumble over the line. If we don't perform, I think they, ha they have a goal in them. Uh, and a, I think they have a goal in them at the Aviva because they're a counter-attacking side. Um, but uh, you have to come then to our own defence. Uh, who's going to play? Uh, who's fit for the two games? John O'Shea will be hugely missed, uh, for example. Um, so it's going. I think this is going to go all the way, maybe even to extra time uh, and penalties at the end uh, on Tuesday night so if you're betting Richard Dunn to score first is a great bet nil-nil uh, in Tallinn is a very very good bet at 7-1 it's a really really good bet and if you want to have a saver then Ireland to win 1-0 but they don't look to me like a side that gives goals up easily unless you're very aggressive offensively and I don't see Trapattoni being very aggressive offensively. So, nil-nil could be the real bet. And I suppose the ultimate question then, um, over the two legs, 180 minutes, who'll be standing at the end of it? I would hope Ireland just might shade it with a bit of quality from Damien Duff or Robbie Keane, but I would have grave reservations about our midfield. Um, that Whelan is really playing very, very poorly for Stoke. He's having a, a just a nightmare, a confidence nightmare. Saw him play there against Newcastle uh, about 10 days ago. Uh, he really, really was struggling. And Andrews is out of switch. He's scoring the odd goal. But those two against maybe three or four, because they will load up midfield. And they, I would have a real worry about that. So I think it's... Almost too close to call with confidence. Uh, and I wouldn't... Looking at them, they're better than, much better than the weak groups, teams in our group that we've just come through, Slovakia and Armenia, say. These guys, they're more aggressive, they're sharper, they're a good coach, they're well set up, uh, and we're in the red zone. But it's fingers crossed. That's the way I, I see it. Looking to the other playoffs, there's three other playoffs going on at the same time as our one. Um, just briefly, what are your thoughts on Turkey against Croatia? I think Croatia are an excellent side. I was most impressed with them, although they only drew with us here in a friendly match. I think they have some really good players. Modric is a good example, but they have a lot of very good players. Uh, I think Croatia will progress there, um, although Turkey is a tough draw for them. But I would say Croatia. Bosnia playing Portugal? Very, very tough to call. I mean, Bosnia, Bosnia, fair side. They pushed France all the way in their group. 
uh, and in fact uh, they were leading in Paris until a disputed penalty about 10 minutes from the end uh, saw France stumble over the line really. Um, I'd be inclined to go with Bosnia. Uh, I think Portugal underperform. They have of course got Ronaldo but he doesn't play so well for Portugal as he does for Real Madrid. So possibly Bosnia might be the value bet there. And the Czechs against Montenegro? Montenegro, useful side again. They pushed England uh, at Wembley and uh, at home. Um, I don't think the Czechs are great, so I slightly favour Montenegro there. And the three biggest bankers you touched on it earlier, Richard Dunn to score. Richard Dunn to score at twenty-five to one is just an amazing bet. Get on, as they say. Uh, I think nil-nil in talent, or one-nil Ireland in talent. They're two good bets. If I had to put the gun to my head, the bet I'd be having, the big bet I'd be having is nil-nil in talent. Okay. okay thank you.